products. And we'll be talking about many other innovations here too, including for our Fusion Cloud applications, our Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, our OCI, our databases, and lots more. And to do so, we will be sitting down with tons of Oracle executives, including Steve Miranda, Jenny Sai Smith, and Pradeep Vincent, as well as some great customers. We've got Nokia, Vodafone, and National Health Service. What are you most excited about today? You know, we talk a lot about um, things that are happening, trends like AI, which I just mentioned, but I'm really curious how our customers are thinking about AI. Mm. We've got some questions lined up for them. What about you? I mean, you kind of hit on it, but I'm always excited to hear from our customers what they've been up to. It's been just about a year since we've been in London for Cloud World, and so always excited to hear what everybody's been up to. Yeah, for sure. And we want to hear from you too. So if wherever you're tuning in from, make sure you use the comments to tell us what you're excited to hear from the broadcast today. Or if you've tuned into any of the keynotes from Cloud World Tour London, tell us your thoughts on those. We want to hear from you. Yeah, we're looking forward to hearing from you. And uh, with that, I think it's time to get rolling. Let's do it. All right, let's get to it. To kick off our broadcast here from Oracle Cloud World Tour London 2024, I'm with the Executive Vice President of Applications Development, Steve Miranda. Thanks so much for joining us, Steve. Thank you, my pleasure. Now, your keynote was awesome this morning. Thanks. And you talked a lot about um, innovation within Fusion yep. uh, Cloud applications, and that really is our secret sauce to helping customers succeed, Yeah. Um, which includes generative AI being <laughs> embedded across all of our apps. And we're right. gonna dive into that, but before we go deeper, um, can you explain what we mean when we say Oracle AI is embedded across our full stack? Sure. So, first of all, we, we are the only company that's in the application business and the technology business. Right. So, if you want to use our technology and our infrastructure, OCI, and Northern Database, we have AI available to you. Sometimes it's as a feature, so Autonomous Database uses AI to operate itself, to patch itself. Uh, Autonomous Linux uses it for the same thing, to optimize. Or you can choose to build your custom applications and you can use the, the generative AI or other AI services we have as part of, uh, of OCI. Now in applications, in Fusion applications, we've taken the same thing that a developer might do and we've used AI to build out features. Mm. So we've used it to build features in Oracle service. Right. We've used it to build narrative reporting across financials. We've used it in HCM to do appraisals and to do uh, recruiting. So embedded, it's really wherever you need the AI, it's a feature, or in fact, if you're gonna build your own, it's embedded as part of OCI as a service. So it's really pervasive in everything we do. Well, and something that we've been talking about, you know, a lot lately is that Oracle is the king of data yeah. and data is at the heart of everything AI. And so right. this is like, not, this is, we're doing a lot of new things, but it is not necessarily new overall for us. Right, I mean, I think if you think of Oracle historically and even now, like what is the first thing that comes to mind? It's either probably big data right. or security. Right. And uh, you know, processing massive amounts of data in a secure way and giving you great results. That's exactly. what we do. Yeah. And that's what AI, I mean, there's of course an AI engine, there's LLM, right. but at the heart of it, it's trust with our customers, securing their data, uh, handling large amounts of data very, very quickly. And so AI is really on our sweet spot. Yes, absolutely. Um, can you actually talk to us about how um, our embedded AI, our generative AI, comes to life with our customers? Sure. Well, I'll give you, again, a few of the apps cases, and it's right now at the stage of productivity. So let me give you a little bit of what's there today and what might be a preview of what will be coming. Yeah. So we announced uh, over 50 use cases within the applications, and it's uh -huh. across the board. And the use cases are in the applications as part of every update that 100% of our SaaS customers receive. So in 24A, their normal quarterly update, you have features. And what do you have to do? You basically have to say, I wanna use this feature. Right. And, it, and a button appears. And so now, if you wanna create a job post in HCM, you used to have to go in and you'd say, okay, I wanna engineer for a Fusion and they need two years experience, they need a computer science or engineering degree and they need to know Java. Well, all that is public information. Right. We post our jobs. All of our customers post their jobs. And the AI engine has been trained on all of that as part of their nature. So now you enable the feature, you get a button, and you say, create a job post for an app engineer. You press the button, 
everything wow. I said gets generated for you. It's totally automatic. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's what everybody is looking for right now. Productivity, more yeah. efficiency, doing more with less, and this Ab is enabling that entirely. Absolutely. And it's done securely, and exactly. it's done with the best in class AI engines. Exactly. Um, now, you also talked about in your keynote being customer first, which we've we've heard, right? right? Safra talked about it in yeah. Vegas last year, and it's something that we've always really, you know, customers put, put, put our customers at the heart of everything we do. Yeah. So aside from delivering great products and uh, incredible innovation, which we just discussed, what else are we doing to help customers really succeed right now? Well, you know, I, I would always say, even when we were on premise, that, you know, we'd like to be an extension to our customers' IT organization. Yeah. The, the problem was, in the old days, we would deliver software, and a customer would use it maybe a year later, maybe two years later, longer, and they would customize it. So when our engineering team got involved with a customer, it didn't even look like our software. It was very old. Right. Today, every customer gets the exact same update, and we get to see what they're using. Right. So we see immediately which features they're using, which they're not using. And so our engagement with customers is so much more intense and so much more real time. We're on, I'm personally on a little over two dozen steering committee meetings where we're advising, we're getting feedback directly, we're getting feedback on enhancements. And then you couple that with the speed of SaaS and the AI and this innovation, right. we're able to deliver it to them and they get it. They don't have to wait for an upgrade three years down the road. So right. it's just a, it's got a virtuous cycle. So now they get it and they tell us, oh, this was good, this wasn't so good. And guess what? We turn it again yeah. and fix it yeah. and improve it. And so I think, you know, we've really focused the entire team and the entire company. Doug talked about a lot of new roles at Oracle right. around making sure that customers are successful. Right. And it's a it's a noticeable difference. And you know, conferences like this where Saffer had or Doug had customers on stage, Saffer in Vegas had customers. Right. Cormac interviewed some great customers in our keynote. It's it's been fantastic. Yeah, we're for, we're hearing it firsthand. Even here on Oracle TV, we're hearing it firsthand, oh, which is which is really exciting. Um, now, another big focus area for us has been healthcare yeah. and building a connected healthcare ecosystem. Yeah. Can you share how Fusion Cloud applications are really helping hospitals operate more sure. seamlessly? Sure. Well, what we saw in hospitals is very similar to what we see in lots of industries. Unfortunately where you have industry specific applications that are not connected to ERP. Now, hospital happens to be a very relatable uh, to everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, we built out a couple features. One would be uh, nurse scheduling. Uh, now it's generally scheduling, but nurses seem to be one of the most in demand and most crucial in terms of scheduling. Right. And basically the, the difference was we've had a scheduling engine in HCM, but it wasn't connected to the hospital system record. So you could have an appointment for a, an operation or a treatment or a therapy, and the nurse or a caregiver had to have certain skills. I mean, certainly you'd want somebody, if you had an operation, make sure that right. you've got the, the right, right, skills. <laughs> right skills and right experience trained. Uh, and you also want to make sure that they haven't already worked 50 hours that week, or right. they haven't worked you know, 12 hours consecutive, and different rules of engagement, both in terms of compliance and in terms of union and in terms of patient safety. But what was missing was the scheduling part in HCM had no connection to the actual hospital scheduling system and what was actually happening because hospital by its nature, things don't always go as planned. And so if a nurse happened to work overtime on one day because the procedure took longer, you've got to reschedule that quickly and know all these rules. And so what we've done is we've added the capability with HCM, but connected it to the EMR, not only Cerner, but any EMR out there. Wow. We've done the same thing in supply chain, which may not be as visible to, to you and I, but basically think of the supply chain, the same thing. Not only do you want the nurse or physician there qualified to do it, you really want to make sure they have the equipment available. Right. You're going in for an MRI. You don't want to hear, oh, sorry, you got to wait for that. The machine is not available yet. Or yeah. you know, you want to make sure they have the right surgical equipment, the right medications. And so again, supply chain was just very disconnected from the hospital system. So we've built out that end-to-end -end connection from our Cerner applications and any other third party and our Fusion applications. So how are we doing this similarly in other industries? What are other key area focus areas for us right now? Right. Well, it's, it's all the areas that we have are, are industry specific applications. Right. So in core banking, we have a core banking initiative and we have a mutual customer that they're taking that core banking data and integrating it into the general ledger. Um, we have a lot of customers in the hospitality suite. You know, much of our references are in uh, hotels and, and right. luxury resorts and they have you know, our hospitality suite, but that connects directly into finance. So we're kind of bridging that gap. Uh, we have a connections in retail. So really all of the big industries where we have industry applications, now that we have a complete industry app and complete fusion app, 
starting to build those connectors to give a whole new total value to our customers. That's incredible. And again, we are hearing some of those stories yeah. here today, and we're going to hear some later here on Oracle TV, and I'm so, so excited to dive in. Um, but before we let you go here, yeah. um, two, two final questions, and one being, what would you say to the customers right now who don't think they're ready for Fusion Cloud applications? Well, it's interesting. We had somebody, a customer of ours, come to us pre-pandemic, the last I think it was Oracle World before it was Cloud World. Yeah, right. It's like, hey, make sure you support the on-premise because we're not ready to go. Okay, and it came up afterwards and we're like, we've got to go and we've got to go now because they needed, they'd done some M&A, their industry changed dramatically because of the pandemic and they really needed to modernize and co consolidate their systems. And I guess I would say is when it's a big project, you can't start too late. Right. Because you can't, there's, and, and you know, our projects tend to be large. So, Gen AI is there today. Industry consolidation is there. Yeah. There's always something, and you've seen it over the last several years, just a changing dynamics of the entire world. If you start too late, it's really, really difficult. Right. So start now. We've got lots of references. Yeah. We can go fast. Uh, and talk to our customers and talk to references and ask them. Don't ask them the happy path. We were very proud of how we worked with our customers. Ask them how was it when they had a problem. Right. Because uh, I know, and in fact, uh, Nokia said it on stage today. She said she was a little nervous, but it came out okay. Right. So, and, and you hear that often around the show floor and from customers. Yeah, I mean, even hearing Nat West on the stage earlier today talk about their their transformation and and saying, you know, you can't you can't ever start too soon. Yes, Because exactly. as you get into your transformation, you're also going to be facing the changes within whatever process you're changing, you know, like the cloud or whatever it may be. That's so. a much better answer I just gave. You can't start too soon. <laughs> there you go. You can't start too yeah. soon. Um, what can customers expect from our Fusion Cloud applications over the coming year? Oh, well, I just think that uh, speed of innovation. Okay. So, you know, we were here last year. Uh, chat GPT had just really become popular. Right. Um, I wasn't talking in my keynote about AI or Gen AI. Maybe had a little bit mm -hmm. in it. Uh, and we're here a year-ish, maybe less than a year later. We have 50 new services that are out and available to our customers. Yeah. So I don't know what the five years down the road will bring technology-wise. I know it's going to be fast. Yeah. I know it's going to be different. And I know we're going to be able to bring that to our customers. Yeah. And that's a substantial difference. And that kind of safety and security and our promise to work with them and innovate very, very quickly is really what they can expect. It's very, very exciting. Yeah, well, thrilled. thank you so much for being with us on Oracle TV. Steve. Happy to be here again. Thank you. And you mentioned this earlier, but right after this break, we actually are going to have Nokia come and sit down with us. So don't go anywhere because we'll have Elizabeth Nielsen, Nokia's Vice President of People Business Services. Stay tuned. As generative AI opens up new frontiers for our customers, Oracle is taking a unique approach to AI based on our decades of enterprise experience. We offer AI and generative AI functionality across the full Oracle solution stack, including cloud infrastructure, data platforms, Fusion Cloud, NetSuite, and Oracle industry-specific applications. With the same performance, security, and privacy standards we've always delivered. For example, if you're like most Oracle customers, you probably have business and functional management tools such as enterprise resource planning and human capital management. We've embedded AI directly within these tools to enhance their effectiveness and to improve productivity for your business without requiring your users to learn anything new. For customers with tremendous amounts of data stored in Oracle or MySQL databases, we've also added AI technology like Vector Search to help you more easily find and leverage that data and to avoid the complexity of moving data around. In other words, we're bringing AI to the data rather than moving the data to AI. And with our generative AI service running in OCI, you can build your own applications. We've designed an AI infrastructure that surpasses the performance of dedicated custom on-premise compute clusters while providing the elasticity and consumption-based costs of the cloud. We know that you care about performance because whenever you're paying by the minute, speed matters. Oracle Generative AI models leverage state-of-the-art large language models for enterprises, and Oracle's unique industry knowledge and data insights enhance those models. Further, you can fine-tune the models with your own data for your own real-world use cases and then deploy them in public cloud regions or in your own private dedicated cloud, wherever you need it. Finally, 
all modes of using Oracle's generative AI services, including the unique models you build, come with strong control around data security and governance. All of this at a compelling price performance advantage. Get started today. Hi, and welcome back. We are now joined by Lisbeth Nielsen. She is Nokia's Vice President of People Business Services. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Really enjoying being here today. Amazing. Well, earlier today you were on the keynote stage. Yes. How was that? How is it? I mean, how do you prepare to go in front of thousands of people like that, especially business leaders and peers in your kind of same realm? Of course, it's very exciting, I have yeah. to say. And we've been here since relatively early this morning, kind of getting a tour of the room, seeing how it all works. And also in that way, it was really nice because we have a sense of what was going on in advance. But yeah. Really enjoyed it, actually. Good. So you felt comfortable with it. I felt very comfortable. Well, and, and Comac was great. And it was, uh, well, it was very nice. It, and 10 minutes go so fast. So can't yeah. really believe it. I know it always does. Well, you, again, you did great. Um, Thank you. And, and while you were on stage, you actually talked about Nokia's impressive business transformation journey. Can you start by telling us what was the catalyst for that transformation journey? Yeah, I mean, uh, we were in a situation where basically we had an end of life situation with the two landscape we have today. And that really triggered a discussion about what do we want to do right. going forward. And, uh, you know, we had to decide, do we kind of want to do a bit of fixing here and there? Or do we want to look ahead? And we took a decision really to look ahead and say, you know, if we look at it five years from now, where do we want to go? Right. And that was really a key part of the decision and in the decision to go with Oracle to say, where do we see HRP in five years or maybe even more than that? Right. Yeah. yeah. And I, I mean, obviously glad glad that you uh, you made that dive with Oracle. Yeah. Um, now, the, the first part of your transformation journey was really with your global HR processes. Tell us why you started with that. You, you know, of course, you can kind of just lift and shift over. But when you get this chance of doing things better, you should take it. And, and we very consciously took that decision really to look at employee experience all the way through. Mm -hmm. You know, because our employees want the same experience out, inside Nokia as they get outside Nokia. It's very, very clear. Right. And that was that was an option for us. We, we really looked at more than 100 processes to try and see how could we do them better. You know, which one do we want to keep? Which one do we want to throw out? Which one do we want to just make easier and simpler? Yeah. How did going with HR first impact the rest of the business? I mean, what we try to do is really to make it easier for our employees. Mm. In that way, it should be smooth, it should be natural, and it should really help them develop. Right. And uh, of course, Nokia is a, a technology innovation leader. Right. And it's really important for us to have the right employees, the right talent to keep developing them. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're really trying to help Nokia get the right employees, keep the right employees, continue to develop them so we can continue to be an innovation leader. Right. I just saw I just saw a video recently that was talking to the CEO and saying, you know, a lot of CEOs will say our customers at the heart of everything we do, which is which is it's 1000 percent true. Mm. But the other thing that's at the heart of everything you do is your employees, because if your employees can't do it right, you can't reach those customers. It is. It is really so true. I mean, yeah. when you're in, in this sector that we are, it is really the employees at the heart of everything. You do. Yeah. It's, it's still then we have to focus on we you know, we really need to create an environment where they thrive and, and deliver their best. And that's really a win-win for both them then and for us as a company. And for, exactly, exactly. How uh, how did implementation go? Uh, you know, implementations like this are always to some degree a challenge. And right. It's also been an exciting journey for us, I would say. But, uh, but we have been really focused on where we wanted to go. And one of the focuses really was to go live on time. Okay. So we wanted to go live on time. And that was the whole team uh, that worked on it was really focused on that. Yeah. And we got great help also from Oracle the last three months up to where... We were going live. They were really with us in the journey and kind of fixing the problems. So, so very what, much appreciated. What were some key lessons then in that and making sure that you hit that goal that you were trying to hit of, you know, going live at the date you wanted to go live? Um, you know, getting all the things with us up to the, to the point, because I think there's a, you have this tendency that, you know, if we don't make it this week, maybe we will make it next week. And at some point you kind of run out of time with yeah. that strategy. Right. And because we were so focused on going live on time, 
um, you know, at some point you get get pressed. Yeah. So uh, of course we got as well, and it was a really a, a big team effort to to get us through the last couple of months. But you know, when you have a team that knows what they want to do, and I'm so lucky to have that. Right. Then. Uh, then it's possible. Yeah, that's great. That's great to hear. Um, switching gears a little bit, one of the big topics here at Cloud World Tour London, and really for the past you know year and some change, has been, of course, AI. Hmm. What are Nokia's goals for AI in the future, and how will you work with Oracle to achieve those goals? It's very clear that AI obviously is coming, and we're also looking very, uh, very much into it. We have it into our uh, digital people strategy. Yeah. Oracle is really for us a key enabler. So uh, as I said to Comic, our expectations to you are, are big. Right. So because we will really use it, utilize it. We're looking at uh, the cases, use cases where we're looking from a people perspective is very much about the digital right. assistant type of part. And it's very much about uh, uh, talents and skills. Yeah. That's really where we see it coming uh, very quickly. I have to say, we also look at it as a, a responsible AI. We have a big discussion ongoing inside the company about right. when do we want to use it and for what do we want to use it. And I think it's really important that you do both. That's also a way you kind of get your employees with you and, and be very conscious about both. Really both getting the most out of it, but also about how do you use AI in a responsible way. And one of the things you mentioned uh, on the keynote stage was data consol you're consolidating your data. How di does consolidating your data really kind of help you set up your AI strategy for the future? How will that benefit you? You know, in the past, we had basically our people data in 14 tools. Oh, wow. Yeah, and now we're bringing them into one tool and it makes it much more seamless for us in how to work with it. Also for our employees and line managers that they can actually use data from one point and, and get the benefit out of it somewhere else. And, right. And uh, so so the whole kind of end-to-end -end thinking in our HR processes is much easier this way. The other one, of course, is we can uh, do much more analytics on it. Yeah. You know, go much more in and see if if, the, if we do this, then this happens. And how do we actually uh, much more predictive in, in what's going to happen? Right. It's taking your own data and really making sure that AI fits it, your exact business needs. It, it is. Yeah. It really is. That's amazing. Well, yeah. thank you so much for being with us on Oracle TV. Thank you very much for having me here. And don't go anywhere because Fritz will be back here in just a second with Pradeep Vincent, the Chief Technical Architect for OCI. At Marriott, our purpose is to connect the world through the power of travel. Since its founding in 1927, Marriott has always valued our associates and our people first culture. Everyday associates at our nearly 8,600 properties are working very hard to create memorable experiences for our guests. And we take great pride in that. The cost of our associates is by far the largest item on our P&L systems. And so to be able to um, optimize that investment would have a direct impact on the overall business. Our CHRO will often say he doesn't want our associates to come to work and have to slow down. Our ability to deliver tools to them that have the same level of um, intuitiveness or simplicity that they experience in their personal lives is incredibly important. Having a foundation of global data has been so incredibly important for Marriott. And we knew that Oracle HCM would afford us that opportunity. With that global foundation, we believe we'll be able to uh, grow our data analytics capability, driving better talent mobility, and also better engagement. The analytics cloud platform uh, offered a, a flexible place for us to create uh, dashboards to start to drive those insights for our properties and do it in a way that we um, could ensure that our HR leaders and our business leaders would be able to consume the information. Accenture has had a deep experience uh, with our finance and our global technology organizations. So as we sought to move to the cloud, it just made perfect sense for us to work with Accenture. We began working with Oracle Customer Success Services soon after our implementation to help create that bridge um, across both Oracle with Accenture and also to help Marriott understand how to utilize and own this new platform. So it's, it's Oracle, Marriott, and Accenture all working together, coming up with better solutions. 
The primary value of working with Oracle from our perspective is uh, we have a long partnership with Oracle. Um, we feel their investment in our business and in our success. The insights that we're hoping to gain from the Fusion HCM system are all around how we're managing our associates. We believe that all of our associates have a role in leading this organization. We know that our workforce is going to continue to want uh, flexibility, whether it's flexibility and opportunity, flexibility in the way they're receiving their compensation and benefits, um, flexibility in how they get scheduled. Oracle's been a great partner for Marriott in hearing our business needs, working with us to respond within their roadmap, accepting changes, and really as sort of thought partners with us. All of you AI junkies will be excited for this next conversation. If you're just tuning in, we're coming at you from Oracle Cloud World Tour London 2024. And I'm here with Oracle Senior Vice President and Chief Technical Architect for Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, Pradeep Vincent. Hey, how are you doing, Pradeep? Good to see you. I'm doing great. Thank you for having me here. Oh, we're, we're glad to have you. Um, you know, in your uh, OCI keynote earlier, um, you talked about building the uh, intelligence, building the more intelligent cloud. What does that mean for us and more importantly for our customers? Well, it means multiple things, right? I think, you know, a big part of that is essentially, you know, we AI is a big focus for us, right? Uh, we have amazing infrastructure and customers are already using that. But it's also about, how do we actually take AI, integrate that with every app that we have, every functionality that we have, every service that we have, so that it almost disappears from customers, right? And that's actually, you know, a big part of intelligent cloud, in my view, right? It should like, you know, in many cases, customers do, shouldn't have to worry about what is AI. They shouldn't have to worry about, you know, clicking or worrying about how to train things. It should just be there and it should actually be invisible. And that's a huge part of the value proposition. I think. You know, I just want the answer. I don't, is it using just standard automation? Is it using AI? I shouldn't have to worry about that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's get into AI and in, in, in Doug Caring's opening keynote, uh, he talked about uh, how Oracle's offered AI for quite a while. Can you just briefly outline what some of our, OC, our AI services on OCI are? Yeah, so look, I think, you know, the general AI has been a massive thing in the last couple of years, but, you know, AI and machine learning has been there for a long time. And we use that internally in Oracle for a long time as well. And we also had had, you know, product offerings for a long time that center on machine learning. We had Vision, we had Chatbot, that has been, you know, a standalone OCI uh, service, uh, but also integrated with our apps for many years, this is nothing new, and this actually predates all the Gen AI revolution that happened recently, right? But at the same time, I think the Gen AI is a super exciting area for all of us. It's a massive, you know, uh, area of innovation. So we recently launched OCI Generative AI service, you know, that essentially allows customers to host, you know, our fine tune and host models uh, in a very private and secure fashion where they're very comfortable using their data that's a very sensitive data to train their models and use it for inference. And at the same time, we also have, you know, a foundational infrastructure services that, you know, any customer can use to build their own models. If they actually don't want to use, you know, use our models, that's fine. You know, we actually have customers such as Mosaic, ML, and Reka that just use our underlying infrastructure to build their own models, right? And that is a huge, area of innovation. We have OCI superclusters. That's, you know, in my view, one of the industry leading, you know, networking technology for our GPU clusters. And we have massive farms of GPUs that's enabling these customers. So it's, it's a, you know, that's a, the, the networking and the compute products that power the infrastructure are a big part of it. And um, you and I've talked a little bit about our superclusters before, but for our audience, you know, what makes that unique? What Oracle is doing with the superclusters? Look, I think, you know, so if, if, when you think about generative AI training workloads, uh, there's a, you need to bring together massive amount of GPUs 
in a very tight network so that they can work together really effectively to, to do training runs, right? One of the key things that you know not many may be aware of, GPUs are pretty expensive, but at the same time, these training algorithms, they're not that efficient yet. They actually, you know, they, they don't use the GPUs very efficiently. They have to use rely on the networking to drive up the efficiency so that they exchange data really fast. So the superclusters, our focus has been really on driving extremely high bandwidth and extremely low latency, right? And we want to do, you know, our goal has been to build it on open technology. So we actually use Ethernet and remote DMA technology that's fairly compatible. But our secret sauce and innovation is actually at the infrastructure level itself, at the networking level, so that we can drive the best performance. And if we actually have, find that customers, you know, can drive up the utilization of their GPUs using our super clusters. And, you know, as an example, Mosaic ML, you know, saw 50% improvement in performance, raw performance of the cluster, which is a huge deal given how expensive these GPUs are. Right. You, you mentioned also when you're talking about Gen AI companies being able to train these models with their data. We, we are the data company, you know, or at least that's how we started. Yeah. We still are. Um, are we starting to see customers making use of that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, you know, look, I think the works at multiple levels. We are a data company right from the beginning, right? We have databases, a marquee technology. And if you look at our apps, you know, customers store critical sensitive information as part of the apps, which is internally gets stored as part of our database uh, services. Now, customers absolutely need to use all that data in the context of generative AI. And sometimes it's not just about training the Gen AI using this data. Sometimes it is, but sometimes you actually need to use all the data management services in conjunction with the Gen AI. And that's actually one of the reasons why we have retrieval augmented generation, which we announced, we, are, we, we recently announced a service uh, in beta around that. And what it is, it's, it's really about combining the power of Gen AI with data management system. So you use Gen AI to do parts of it, where you actually you know, use semantic you know, information and do, uh, uh, let's say, a, a language query, translate that to something that's more concrete, but then use literal data that's actually stored in data management systems, such as Oracle database, to actually get precise query information. So now customers, instead of just writing poems using Gen AI, they can actually do something useful with it. Yeah, get some real value, business exactly. value out of business it. Business right? value out of it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, well, let's talk a little bit more about OCI more generally. And, you know, just in terms of our OCI, our, our cloud infrastructure services, how would you characterize what Oracle's offering versus, you know, the other competitors, generally speaking, out there? What sets us apart? Look, I think, you know, a huge part of that is about our unified cloud and distributed cloud strategy. I think when we started OCI, we looked at, you know, what's missing, what's preventing customers from adopting cloud 100%. We found huge areas of gap, and that's essentially what led us to the unified cloud and distributed cloud strategy. Our goal is essentially to take, you know, OCI and put it close to customers as possible. That's why we have so many public regions launched. We have 68 public regions already launched. We have dedicated regions, we have alloy regions, and we do multi-cloud partnership with Microsoft. All of that is a testament to the distributed cloud strategy, right? That's a huge part of you know, what we're doing, OCI. And what, what's driving all these different deployment options? Honestly, it's customers, right? At the end of the day, it's you know, customers are essentially you know, find value in having this and they you know nobody else is offering something of this form so you know it's a it, it's a real impediment for, for for them if you don't have it so this is a very unique value proposition in the industry to have the distributed cloud options with dedicated regions and so many public regions but on top of a dedicated regions and alloy and multi cloud what about sovereign cloud can you describe what that means and um you know, where, how we're doing that? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, SoundCloud is extremely popular in Europe, uh, obviously. Um, you know, I think it's a, it's a type of region. Um, it, it, it essentially is, th you can think about this as a public cloud, but it's, you know, built for a very specific region, reason, with a specific set of governance and uh, data privacy and data sovereignty guarantees that comes with it. Uh, uh, and I think it's, you know, it's designed to make it easy for European customers, including European government entities and government workloads to be deployed on top of Sovereign Cloud. Got it. And not to create an equivalency with the topic of security, which is part of it, but Sovereign is much more than that. But Speaking of security, which is a big issue, uh, has is always a big issue for most businesses. Um, how is securing data in the cloud different than doing it on premises? Yeah, I think you know there are big differences. Um, in in the cloud, you know, cloud operators, security is always a joint endeavor. Cloud operators play a role, customers play a role, but I think in the cloud. Historically, there's been this mindset that customers need to do most of it. We offer features and the customers go and you know, tune all of it or parameterize all of it and enable all of it. At Oracle, we kind of have a different mindset. Right. We kind of want to you know, enable that by default. We kind of want to bake that and make that disappear across our products. It's secure, period. If you really want it to be insecure, talk to us. <laughs> it's secure. Yeah. We can make it insecure for you, I suppose. Yeah, but I don't only know. after a I lot of conversations. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It'd be hard Are you work. really sure I mean, you yeah. want to do this? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, great. Thank you so much for uh, sharing all this with us today, Pradeep. Thank you for having me. All right, great. And uh, we're going to take a quick break, but don't go far. We're going to be right back. I will be talking to... Stephen Sutcliffe, he is the Director of Finance and Accounting for the National Health Service. Be right back. Some of the unique values that Fivos provides to customers are great data analytics to help improve patient outcomes and to reduce cost in hospital stays and share that information across the globe. Data security is the one thing that keeps us awake, making sure that every part of it is from the very base layers of our, of our compute all the way up through network, through application, has to be rock solid. When you are in healthcare and this is patient information, you tend to have to go a lot slower, right? There's a lot more compliance efforts. We decided to move to OCI from AWS, honestly, originally because of cost. Cost and in the end, support, right? So with AWS, I don't have, right, without paying extra money every month, I had no support. Oracle's cloud was built with security in mind from the very bottom. So what we provided after moving to OCI to our customers was a much more secure cloud than they were in, in the first place. We started down this, this path of using logging analytics inside of our application instead of Splunk, and it has been fantastic. The resource issues or needs of the Splunk agent um, prevented me from running it during the day when my customers were using their services. So the best I could do was yesterday. So that's out for monitoring, alerting, right? I might be able to find some problems, but most likely I already had them reported to me by the customer. I never want a customer to tell me something's not working, right? So we want to immediately know when there's a problem or if there might be a problem in five days. And logging analytics, being able to such a low resource usage, we could have it running and we have data coming in 10, 20 seconds after it actually appears on on our application. So we get the opportunity to see patterns as they happen and we get notified of them before anything bad happens. We can see trends, not just in a customer, but across all the customers at the same time. Helps us be proactive, not just for a customer, but for the entire organization then, or the entire workflow application. Without Oracle, we would be on this cloud adventure all by ourselves. I wouldn't be able to be proactive. It's gonna help my customers because they will see far fewer problems because we will be so far ahead of the game that those problems that may have existed in the past will have already dealt with before it becomes a support ticket or an issue. Oracle will help us get there by sort of leading 
in data security, leading in this logging analytics, making a product that I can pass cost along and not have a doctor go, I can't afford. Hello again, I am here with Stephen Sutcliffe. He is the Director of Finance and Accounting for NHS. We're gonna talk a little bit about OCI, a little bit about, uh, I don't know, maybe some finance stuff we'll get into. Uh, good to see you, thanks for joining us. You're welcome. And it's um, NHS SBS actually, which is Shared Business Service. That's correct. Okay, tell us what that is, how that fits into NHS. So NHS Shared Business Services, or NHS SBS, as we like to be known, uh, is the largest corporate back office uh, for, for the NHS. Um, so we provide uh, finance services, payroll services, uh, procurement services for all aspects of the NHS, but they need to come to us. We compete um, uh, to, to get the business. It's not an automatic right that the oh, NHS wow. has, a, a, has a back office function. What are some of the challenges in providing these kind of services for um, the, what do you call it, NHS trusts? Yeah, so we have um, NHS commissioners and we provide the whole service for NHS commissioners. So all of the 260 billion pounds that the NHS spends every year goes through our, our books and we have about 30% of the, of, the, of the trusts. The key challenge for me is significant financial pressures in the, in the NHS, um, really struggling financially, really struggling after, after COVID. Um, so for me, it's how we help drive efficiencies and put money back into the front line. That's, that's our value, that's our, our purpose. Uh, it's also the majority of my users aren't finance professionals. They are doctors and nurses and clinicians that hate finance, it's not their <laughs> job. So how do I create a user experience that means that they, 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 that they have the time to do what they should be doing, treating patients. Right. So on the one hand, your, your sort of customer, your internal customers want to, want to make sure they can do their jobs and not have to worry about this, but also internally at SPS, you're trying to help these, um, these entities drive efficiencies in their business as well and, and save money, yeah, I would we assume. Are. We are, so we, we uh, uh, typically 30 or 40% cheaper when, when, they, when they look to us um, uh, compared to the, their, their current solution. And also for me, what value do we bring? So we bring controls and audit, we bring good processing, we bring efficiencies, we enable um, organizations to, to report and make decisions as well. Okay. And, and so what role is Oracle playing in helping uh, you deliver some of these services? So Oracle's a key partner of ours. It has been since we were in, we were set up in 2003, we've always had Oracle. But for me, more recently, as we move towards cloud, it's becoming even more uh, uh, crucial. Really working in partnership uh, with Oracle to transform our organization and ultimately my passion to transform NHS finance. So you are running uh, on-premises versions of the software now moving to the cloud fully. That's correct, yes. Okay, great. And so what were the gaps that you see in your, um, in, in the multi-cloud environment that you had and as, or were facing and, and what challenges uh, were you facing with that? So for me, the, the, the step to, to OCI, which is about five years ago for, for us, was our first step into, in, in, into the cloud, uh, moving from a, fairly inflexible, expensive on-prem, which was managed by a third party as well. So we were out, didn't have the control. Um, things took so long to, to change. Uh, we also didn't have the ability to integrate some of the data sources that we need to, need to integrate. And we've got that capability now. And certainly it's enhancing our, our, our thinking around, around data. And I'm really excited about, about AI as well to come, but we're not there yet. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get there, You'll we'll get talk there. about cool. that. Um, so what, what were some of the, the features um, and capabilities you just started five years ago that you, were, that you were looking at when you landed on OCI? So for me, um, the ability to be more flexible and to scale and, and therefore for us to develop small proof of concepts uh, around change, whereas previously everything was a big, 
waterfall approach to change, which would take quite quite some some time. We've got some very complicated integrations and data flows that um, that go in and out of of of, uh, of, the, of the system. That, that was really really crucial to make sure those integrations were were, were performing, and, and then the general performance of the of of, of the system as, as well has certainly been enhanced with OCI. You talk generally about some of the things that moving to the cloud has provided. What are some of the can you talk about some examples of some things that you're able to do now that you weren't able to before? Yeah, so we have um, done quite a lot around uh, the ability to spin up um, various aspects of, of, a, of a piece of concept. We uh, we integrate with all of the payroll uh, records, the ability to, to use that data, spin that analysis up uh, a lot quicker. It wasn't there before, it would be a very manual uh, process for us to do that. In fact, now it's a lot more automated. And I'll bet people love the ability not to have all those manual processes. They do indeed. They do yeah, indeed. Yeah. Talk about efficiency. Um, all right, you touched on AI uh, before, and you know you, you you mentioned that that's more maybe something in the future. But as you think about it, do you have some ideas on what what magical things you'd like it to do for what you? The, the services you deliver for NHS overall as an organization. Yeah, so for me, my utopian vision is, is a is a touchless process. Um, so how 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 do we how does the automation the AI help that that touchless process? How does it work out when things come into the system? What you need to do with those rather than needing an eyeball at the moment, a manual intervention at the at the, at the moment. So so the machine learning aspect of, of things is really re really exciting. Um, my inbred accountancy gets excited about analytics and reporting and, and, and the data so that, that, that predictive analytics and, and moving up the value chain uh, around analytics. But I, and I think for, for, for me, just making life so much easier to free people up to do what people do amazingly well, which is, which is helping and adding value rather than having to do the churn of things. Yeah, I, I can see a lot of that. And that's a lot of what people are looking at for AI. Um, of course, you know, we're going to hear a lot today about yeah. uh, what's going on with, with Oracle AI. So you're, you're in good hands, good. I think I want to say there. On the, on the finance side, um, just a little bit, you know, the role of people in finance has become, I would say, not that it wasn't as important before, but kind of a linchpin for how organizations operate. You know, the, the people in finance roles you know, they, they have a lot of, they hold a lot of the keys, have a lot of the answers. How is that, how do you see the, the role of the finance function having changed over the last few years, at least from where you sit? Yeah, so I think it is, uh, Kusha, I think, um I went into finance because I, I wanted to make a difference to the business. I wanted to make a difference to the NHS and I happen to have an analytical brain that helps me do that. There are 16,000 NHS finance uh, professionals and I would want, that, want them to be spending time with clinicians to help them make decisions, to help them ultimately improve patient care, not moving widgets uh, uh, around, not moving And I think the genuine business partnering is the skill set of the future for the finance professionals, not just moving deck chairs around a budget statement, which yeah. is where they're in the past. Well, what are some of the key skills that will be needed for that kind of partnership? Yeah, so I think, I think it's really interesting around IT and business. So I think both parts of the organization need to understand a bit more. Yeah. So that, that, that unicorn of the past that somebody that could understand IT and could understand business, I think that's a core skill now. I, actually, I would expect my, my finance leads to be doing low code and no code and going in, which was the domain of the IT professionals in the past. All of that I think is usually exciting, but that is a skill set that needs to be developed. Oh, wow. Well, that should be exciting. <laughs> it, will it, be. it sounds like you're embracing it. I so absolutely, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. great. Well, Stephen, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. And speaking of AI, uh, let's take a little deeper dive into our partnership, Oracle's partnership with Cohere. And after that, Kendall will be sitting down with our Vice President of Product Management, Jenny Sai Smith. Cohere's mission is to give technology language. Language is our default mode uh, of intellectual exchange. And the amount of good and the change that we can produce by giving that tool to our technology opens up 
totally new product experiences, new efficiencies, and a totally new mode of us working with our technology. I was fortunate enough to be uh, at Google Brain as part of the team that created the Transformer, which is uh, now the backbone of these large language models. We were frustrated because we saw the opportunity for these models to create transformational change in our world, but it just wasn't happening. And so we decided we're gonna be the ones to do it ourselves and Cohere was born out of that. The way that Cohere makes it easy for enterprises to adopt and use this technology is by building a platform that gives them access to state-of-the-art language models. Second, makes it extremely simple to customize them via fine-tuning and augmentation via retrieval augmented generation. And then third, does all of that within a completely data private, secure setting. It's a way to make models much more relevant, much more reliable and trustworthy. So the relationship with Oracle has been hugely impactful, both on the front of compute and providing the best supercomputers on the face of the planet, but also in terms of going to market together, creating new products together, transforming existing products, and really bringing this technology to enterprise. So the OCI Generative AI service really lives up to our mission of building large language models for enterprise in a way that is hyper protective of their data, completely secure. I'm extremely excited to be partnering with the Oracle database team to provide Cohere's latest embedding model, which is dramatically more accurate. What it does is it gives you an intuitive way to search. It actually understands the intent of your query and searches with that instead of the specific words that are contained within it. And so we benefit massively from getting to partner and learn from Oracle on that front. The transformation that we're seeing across Oracle's product suite, as well as the collaboration in creating entirely new products on OCI is just so exciting. Welcome back. I now have the pleasure of sitting down with Jenny Sy Smith, the Vice President of Product Management. How are you, Jenny? I'm fine, thanks, Kendall. It's great to be here with you. We're so glad to have you here. You did great in your keynote earlier today. Thank you. Very, very exciting. Um, to start, can you share with us the main topics driving innovation across data, AI, and application development today? Well, Gen AI has become the most popular topic since November 2022 when ChatGPT was unleashed to the world. Yeah. And um, every time I talk to a customer, they want to know, what are you doing about Gen AI? How is database going to support these use cases for Gen AI? So, Yeah, gen I mean, generative AI is the name of the game. Um, and it's, uh, again, again, a big theme this week, but a big theme, gosh, over the last year and a half. You mentioned in your, uh, in your keynote that Database 23C supports AI vector search. Can you tell us more about what this announcement means? So as I said, generative AI is a very important topic for our customers. They want to make use of it for increasing productivity and improving user experience. However, generative AI is trained on a very general corpus of data. Right. And for our customers, they need to be able to feed their data, their business data, to generative AI to ensure it provides the right answers. And vector search, AI vector search in Oracle Database 23C will allow our customers to store the vectors that are necessary to feed to generative AI to improve its responses. Got it, okay. So we're kind of getting rid of what I hear in the industry as hallucinations, right? Exactly. Got it. Previously, you had to be an expert to an expert data scientist really to use AI. Do our customers still need to be experts in this arena? That's the beauty of it. We made sure that we build in the simplicity of using this feature. So a DBA who hasn't been trained on machine learning can very easily use AI vector search. But then can AI replace experts? Um, that's the $100 question or $1,000 question, yeah. right? Um, the answer is really not at this time. So you still need experts who can validate the answers coming from generative AI and making sure that it isn't hallucinating. Okay. Um, what are some of the other specific ways that, that customers will be able to increase productivity with generative AI support tied to 
the database? Well, um, in addition to allowing them to be able to create their own applications leveraging generative AI and AI vector search, we're also adding generative AI into our product so that they're easier to use. So for example, we're adding generative AI to uh, autonomous database, right. select AI, right? So you can actually talk to your database now and ask questions in a natural language. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, we just announced Oracle Globally Distributed Autonomous Database. What more can you tell us about this? Okay, so Autonomous Database has been around for several years, right? right? And uh, Distributed Database essentially is a way for customers to be able to distribute the data across many different regions, either for scalability and availability um, right. requirements or for uh, data sovereignty. So there are certain right. you know, laws that require data to be residing in certain locations. And so the globally distributed autonomous database gives you a distributed database, but with the ease of use of autonomous database. So what industries do you think that's gonna be like most applicable towards? The primary industry that we've been working with is financial services. I thought, yes. yeah, yeah. And we have so many events with um, across financial services that are diving into this right now. And exactly. it's very, very exciting. Um, so one, one other question, and I'm going to go back to your keynote here for a second, but um, you mentioned generating use-centric data in your keynote. Why is this so revolutionary to uh, data management? Yeah, so, you know, data is something that's been around for a long, long time, yeah. and Oracle obviously has been in the business of managing data for four decades. Right. Um, now, developers having to use data to essentially do things in their application, right? They come up with easier ways of accessing the data. Mm -hmm. And so that's caused sort of a fracture in terms of they want to be able to use data in JSON document format, but then the data is stored in relational format. Right. So what we've done is to create technologies that basically unify the two. Mm -hmm. So unifying the way that developers want to be able to access the data with how the data is most efficiently stored and managed. I love that you brought up that Oracle has been, you know, quote unquote, the king of data forever. Um, and that's really central, tying this all together, that's really central to AI too. I mean, AI is not new for Oracle. We are, mm -hmm. the, to make AI work for your business, you need data. And so I think that all that ties it all together perfectly well with a big red bow. Yes. Um, what else can we look forward to over the next year when it comes to database? Well, we're working on making it cheaper, better, faster. Mm. I mean, that's really what our customers want us yeah. to do, right? And so we're coming up with new ways of allowing our customers access to our most powerful technologies, such as Exadata, but not have to upfront pay millions of dollars, right. which, you know, for some businesses, right, right. it's difficult. And right. so I look at it as democratizing, creating technologies that democratize access to the power of data. That's very, very exciting. Well, thank you so much, Jenny, for being with us. Thank you, Kendall. It's been a pleasure. And don't go anywhere because Fritz is going to be back with Pedro Sardo. Pedro is the Director of IT Operations and Technology Centers, as well as the CIO of Shared Services Operations for Vodafone. But before we get to that interview, let's hear about more innovation across our database. back and I am here with Pedro Sardo. He is the director of IT operations and technology centers as well as CIO of shared service operations for Vodafone. Uh, how do you fit all that on a business card? Uh, that's always a bit of a problem. <laughs> I, need, I, I need to find a solution to, to, to simplify my job title, but all unfortunately right. I have to do a lot of work. All right, we'll talk afterwards. I'll help. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll workshop it a little Excellent. bit. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll take some cues from you. <laughs> okay. Um, now, Vodafone uh, became a household name as a telecommunications company, but that's evolved. How would you characterize Vodafone today? Look, um, Vodafone 
um, has been a traditional telecom company, uh, but we are now evolving to try to, to become more than this. Um, we are also uh, moving into become not so much of a telco company, but more of a tech company expanding into areas that are typically very close to the telecom space, but are enable us to move into the into more the technology area. Let me give you two examples. Okay. Uh, for instance, on IoT, okay, we we have a product. We have the biggest platform, uh, IoT, the, the biggest world platform uh, for, for IoT that has been recognized as a Gartner leader. Um, it has 175 million connections. Uh, and so that's something that is enabling us to really progress into a different world, not only the telco world. Another example, in Africa, we have one of the largest financial services platform. It's called M-Pesa, and it's used by over 50 million people every single day. Uh, so that's just two examples where we are moving a bit outside of the, tech, of the, tech, of the telecom world. Got it. So you're using the advantage of the infrastructure, but also the platform to exactly. offer these kinds of services yeah, exactly. that you more equate with a traditional te technology company, exactly. right? I think we call it, you know, some people refer to that as a tech co. Tech right? co that, that's a terminology that we have used a lot of times. Yeah. Um, because I think that it, again, it merges the telecom and the, the tech company. Got it, got it. And, and what's driving that? Okay, look. Besides, of course, enabling connectivity for our customers, we also want to drive our own digital transformation. And in, we, we want to do this to basically serve our customers better. And, and that's where the digital customer experience nowadays plays a huge part. Okay, so how we, how we deliver that customer experience. The second thing, we want to simplify our internal operations so that we can, again, also serve our customers better. And to drive customer growth, how can we basically bring more products to, to our customers. And, and what role does the cloud play in okay. that? So one way that we want to do this is by really running global platforms. Okay? I mentioned the, the IoT and the, the M-Pesa one, but again, we have a lot of other platforms that we are trying to build in a global way right from the cloud. Okay, We think that the cloud brings us a lot of agility, a lot of velocity. And I was just mentioning before on the keynote, in telco, we have certain days in the year that depending on how you on how you deliver on those days, it determines if you lose or win market share in a single day. One great example that we always use is the iPhone launch day. Okay, It's probably the biggest day of the year for us. How you perform on that day, how you commercially and operationally, it will determine whether you lose or, or, or win or lose market share. So we need to be flexible to be ready with all of the commercial offers that we want to do. We need to be able to scale. We need to, to, to be able to be always on. And trust me, on a day like iPhone launch day, it's hard. <laughs> and, and so how is Oracle helping you achieve some of these goals? Look, we, I, would, I always say that Oracle works with us in two, probably two key areas. Uh, one of them is on the Oracle application side. Uh, traditionally, the BSS stack business support systems that again it's a terminology that we use on the telco world um, and also on even on the new platforms on the cx software as a service like the field service that we use for instance on local markets like uk spain portugal so we work together on those applications are the core of our platforms and how we, how we provide business in a lot of the local markets that we have throughout europe another way is through oci we have a huge program with oracle to migrate a significant part of our infrastructure uh, to Oracle Cloud, uh, and at the same time to modernize a lot of the infrastructure that we use internally. And that's also a, a project that we launched, a partnership that we launched two years ago, and that's been very successful so far. Are there are there some outcomes that you're comfortable talking about? Oh, yes. Well? well, look, for instance, we have modernized, we have migrated to Oracle over 800 databases. We still have a couple of thousands more to do, but we'll do that over the next couple of years. Uh, so that's a really clear outcome that uh, that uh, that uh, that uh, I'm happy to talk. Another one is, for instance, the way that we are transforming our core systems, our BSS systems, to be almost as agile as our digital channels. Although they are based sometimes in what we call legacy technologies, they are becoming, through the use of Oracle technology, much more agile, uh, much more capable of dealing with the business changes uh, than in the past. Got it. Well, that sounds great. Let's talk about um, AI. What what are, what is Vodafone thinking about in terms of AI? 
How will that impact your customers? What's look, the plan? We, we look at AI as something to really augment uh, a lot of the things that we do. Uh, let me give a couple of examples. Of course, we are using AI to our, all of our office users to, in, to improve their productivity. Uh, we are also using AI to help a lot of our software engineers to be more productive when writing code and uh, when, when doing all of their software engineering to traditional tasks. Um, and we are also using AI to really serve our customers, not only sometimes in terms of our chatbots, but also to try to summarize what is happening with our chatbots, what are the questions that our customers are raising, what are the things that why they are calling our call center, so that we can use AI to summarize the thousands of interactions that we have every single day with our customers to try to get early warnings on some of the problems that our customers might be raising. Sometimes it's not possible to do this because it's impossible for somebody to go through all of the chats that right. we have the day before and try to pick up uh, the, 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 key, the key things that the, the customers are raising. That's another example that I think that AI is going to help us more and more in the future. Yeah, I mean, I think when you think about calling your provider in any industry, but certainly your, your uh, telecommunications provider, that idea that the frustration that sets in, you know, I just want an answer. I just want to get closure on this. And, and so if, I, if that can be sped up, there's yes. a lot of great advantages. Exactly. And, and again, we can also augment the capabilities of our agents to really be able to provide better answers to the questions that our customers are asking. Are you seeing, you know, is there a way to tangibly understand how some of the other things that you're doing for your customers are impacting them? Sorry? In terms of like, so you, we talked about better customer yes. service. Um, all of the things that you've rolled out, the the agility that you talked about, are there ways that your customers are um, satisfaction scores and things like yes. that? Yes, so something that we pay a lot of attention is our NPS scores. And that is something that we pay even a bigger focus on, which is the deep, something that we call the deep detractors. Those customers that score us really, really low on the, on the NPS score. What are the reasons that take somebody to really score as low? And we, we are doing, changing our customer experience to especially um, attack um, and address the, the issues that those customers are raising. Because a deep detractor, We'll talk to a lot of people. It will make an effort to, to talk about the bad experience that we have. So we are really making focus that we understand the feedback that our customers gave, especially when it's low scores, and try to understand what can we do to avoid those problems. And we're seeing a significant reduction in terms of the deep detractors because of the focus that we are putting on really going after the deep detractors. What other things can we look forward to in terms of the services that you're rolling out? Uh, look, I think that um, some of the services it's going to be the evolution of the normal telecom services. But again, we are also aiming to simplify the products that we offer to customers because even sometimes I go into the website, sometimes we have a lot of options. Uh, again, we are trying to simplify all of that, like unlimited, just making sure that you, again, you buy, you don't have to worry. So all of the things that are related and to make the, all the experience of customers interacting with Vodafone uh, easier. That's great. Well, um, we look forward to many more of these things and um, as customers, as I'm sure many of our, of our viewers are, um, we're, we're very appreciative of all the work that, that you're doing and hopefully Oracle is helping you be yes, successful with definitely. that. All right, great. Thank you so much no for problem. joining us. Okay, we will be right back after this quick break to close out our time here at Oracle Cloud World Tour London 2024. Be right back. It has never been easier to get answers to business questions. Autonomous Database, with its built-in Select AI, lets you use natural language to query your organization's data. You don't need to know where and how your data is stored to get answers. Select AI manages the entire query process, using large language models to translate natural language to SQL. Here, we're an analyst for MovieStream and are asking lots of questions about what's popular on our service using a chat app that was built using Apex, Autonomous Database's low-code development tool. It's just like getting answers from a coworker, and it's safe. Your data is secured using Oracle's advanced security, regardless of how it's accessed. Here, we're looking at salaries for our executives. Let's say that access were revoked. 
even if you say please, he won't be able to access the data. What's great, it's the perfect way to ask questions when you're on the go. Just pull out your phone, ask your question, and get your answer. What are the most popular devices used to watch action and adventure movies? It's simple to develop natural language apps with autonomous database, and it's future-proof. Large language models are used to translate natural language to Oracle SQL. Well, I can hardly believe it, but that is a wrap on Oracle Cloud World Tour London 2024. What was your favorite part? Ooh, that's hard. Um, there's so much. I mean, I always love coming to new regions and being able to connect with the community in those regions. Um, we came to London around this time last year, so it's been a year since we've been back and it's great to see everybody. But as always, I mean, the customer stories and insights that we hear throughout the day. Um, something that I thought was really interesting is we're talking about stuff that we've talked about for a while now, which is digital transformation and hearing, for example, Michelin talk about their own journey, right? And so, and, and even um, Nat West. Now, Nat West made a really interesting point, which is they've been on this transformation journey for a while. And in that journey, there are changes that are happening to the process of the processes that they're, they're currently changing. Um, so for example, like there have been changes to the cloud that they've had to kind of incorporate as well as AI, right? Yeah, well, speaking of AI, you know, we, we, of course, talked to a lot of people about that, heard a lot about it on stage as well. And, you know, people are looking to AI for some familiar things that they've always looked for, more efficiency. Yeah. You know, Vodafone talked about making their software engineers more efficient, um, delivering a better customer experience. Vodafone also talked about how they wanted to be able to t detect use AI to detect customer problems before they really got to be bigger problems. So kind of same theme, different technology delivering it. Um, but make sure you tell us what some of your favorite parts of the broadcast were as well in the comments. Yeah, and uh, if you liked what you heard here today, I mean, there is so much more where that came from. Make sure you give us a follow, a like, or a subscribe on whatever platform you're tuning in from right now for more series, interviews, and thought leadership just like this. Yes, and of course, join us for our biggest show of the year, Cloud World 2024 in Las Vegas. That is happening September 9th through the 12th. Registration opens up in a little over a month, April 30th. Um, so to get you pumped up, uh, we're gonna close with a look at what you can expect. Let's roll it. Cloud World is back. Oracle's biggest event of the year will return to Las Vegas, September 9th through September 12th. Get a front row seat to keynotes from thought leaders, dive into conversations with experts, experience hands-on demos of all the newest AI solutions, and make new connections at the parties, receptions, themed lounges, and more. Stay up to date on all the activities we have planned by subscribing to Cloud World 2024 updates today.